In 1714, the Longitude Act offered twenty thousand pounds, which is about half a billion dollars today, for any solution which could find longitude to within half a degree. With high incentive, the Board of Longitude received a massive amount of claims, most of which are impractical, at least at that time. For instance. Someone suggested sending service ships along the equator at predetermined longitudes. Those ships then shot gunfire at specific times. Other ships can then use this gunfire as references to calculate their positions. However. Neither the sound nor the flash from gunfire travels very far at sea. As a result, for the service to work, people need to send hundreds of thousands of service ships to cover the entire ocean, and deliver supplies continuously to those service ships, which can bring any country to bankruptcy in no time. By the way, the solution may sound bizarre in the 18th century. It is exactly how the GPS system works today. Instead of service ships, we now have fully automated service satellites. Instead of gunfire, we now use electromagnetic radiations to send signals. Another more extreme example is called powder of sympathy. The method is also known as the wounded dog theory, developed by Sir Kenelm Digby in 1687. Step one, wound the dog. Step two, kill the dog with the powder of sympathy. Step three, send the dog aboard as a ship set sail. Step four. Leave ashore a trusted individual to dip the dog's bandage into a solution of the powder of sympathy every day at noon, which will force the dog to yelp. The yelp meant the sun is upon the meridian at where the ship took off. Thus, a reference is created. This approach is a udu instead of science, because. The correlation between the pain in an old wound and the processing of the old bandage cannot be established. Fortunately, under the efforts of several great scientists at that time, including Sir Isaac Newton, Edmund Halley, and etc., people were able to sort out some reasonable approaches to find longitude. In 1514, a German astronomer, Johannes Wanner, proposed that longitude can be calculated from the motion of the moon across the sky. The idea is that if you observe the same object at different angles, you will have different perspectives, and vice versa. For example, if you can see the Space Needle. And it looks like this. You are very close to the building. If it looks like this, you are further away. If it looks like this, then you are even further away. The method was difficult to do at that time, as people did not know the accurate positions of the stars in the sky, which construct the reference background. To track the motion of the moon. Also, the motion of the moon changes a little bit, month by month, even observed at the same location on Earth. However, the principle of using heavenly bodies as reference is valid. In 1610, as the first person to turn a telescope to the sky. Galileo discovered Jupiter's moons. 
He claimed that the eclipses of the moons of Jupiter occurred 1,000 times a year, and proposed calculating longitude according to these eclipses. This approach turned out to be impractical at sea due to many technical challenges. First, the calculation is very complicated and difficult, even with advanced calculators. Second, it is almost impossible to observe Jupiter and its moons at daytime. Third, as the distance between the Earth and Jupiter are changing, there is always an error in the result. Another approach is to construct a watch to keep time exactly. As pendulum clocks were invented in the middle of the 17th century, people finally have some reliable timekeeper other than our glasses. If people can find the exact time at the reference location, for example London, they can calculate the time difference between the local position and the reference location, which can be converted to longitude. This is how the time zones are generated. To meet the longitude prize requirement, within half a degree, the watch has to be accurate within two minutes per day. However, as Sir Newton stated in his testimony to the Longitude Committee, by reason of motion of the ship, the variation of heat and cold, wet and dry, and the differences of gravity in different latitudes, such a watch has not yet been made. About 40 years after Newton passed away, a watch that is as accurate as 3 seconds per day was produced. <laughs>